Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about transfer port modding and uh, how I go about doing it actually. Um, up until now, I've been using drill bits to uh, put the transfer port into the chuck. Now I modify 2240 transfer ports and uh, I started modifying the 1377s and uh, I couldn't find actually a proper size drill bit for the 1377 that I could hold it right. Um, so I decided to make a little tool out of some scrap brass that I had and I'm actually going to do the other end of this uh, tool and turn it down to actually fit a 2240 transfer port and then I can totally annihilate needing to use a drill bit anymore. Now I've never ever missed. Um, I've always gotten it bang on for centering and everything into the lathe chuck. Um, but where I decided to make this tool wasn't just for the 1377 um, transfer port because it's a restricted transfer port in a Canadian version 1377 of course Crossman guns um, anyhow um, you can actually swap in a 2240 transfer port into a 1377 and still stay under 500 feet per second you'll actually push about uh, mid to high 470s um, you might get into the 480s. I mean, a lot of this, um, as you know, depends on uh, sea level that you live at, temperature outside usually has something to do with it uh, for speed of pellet guns. However, the 1377 being a pump-up gun, it is not affected by any means by cold or hot temperatures for shooting uh, for its speed. So, but it, there is still effects on sea level so you might want to, you know, kind of be a little cautious when you're modding, but you shouldn't be uh, too bad with it. Um, but uh, you can't buy the restricted transfer ports from Crossman. Every time I've ordered them, and right from a Canadian print, you know, you'd think, duh, you know, but they send me a 2240 transfer port. It's like, that's not what I want. Because part of the reason why I like these restricted transfer ports is they're actually really good for power modding a 2240 um, with a 12 inch or 14 inch barrel and being able to still stay under five without screwing around with the hammer spring or the valve. And, uh, you know, so they're handy for that purpose. But for this purpose, um, this could be used also for fine tuning a 1377. So, you know, you could put in an American valve into a 1377, keep the restricted transfer port, and you're pushing 490s pretty easy, um, you know. Or you can take the opposite turn, and you can increase the transfer port hole size stages at a time. And I would recommend having a chronograph for this so you can fine-tune it properly. Um, but you can use the 2240 transfer port in there and still stay under 5 and then you could still further mod the 2240 transfer port in little minute stages. The largest you can drill out a 2240 transfer port uh, before damage is about 3.93 millimeter and um, that's actually uh, the equivalent, uh, if I remember correctly, is a 530 seconds drill bit, which I'll just confirm that. Um, okay. So 3.95 is actually the limit. So it's 5 30 seconds drill bit. Now that's really pushing the envelope uh, on this transfer port without having to make a whole new one. And even that would be kind of really dicey. Um, but 3.95 is a good max out for the transfer port. It definitely gets you uh, reducing that funnel effect over 97% or better and what I mean by a funnel effect is when you're looking at a 2240 valve exhaust port or a 1377 exhaust port and you compare the hole size in the transfer port to that exhaust port the transfer port is still smaller on the inside diameter than the exhaust port so it still creates uh, a funnel or a backwash and a funnel is always a larger opening into and usually goes into a smaller opening right so when it comes to air current flow when you try and push a whole whack load of air up something into a smaller hole you reduce what it can what it's capable of doing you know um, 
but also at the same time you don't want to oversize anything because when you oversize you actually start reducing power you know so you create an opposite funnel so you could be smaller at the exhaust port end larger at the transfer port end but you also got your barrel inlet to consider as well and the whole size in it so power modding can be actually pretty tricky and you know a lot of work to do to really fine tune these things to where you want them to go um, but one thing you don't want to do is just over increase the size of everything period because then if you don't have enough gas you know to make it through there properly then you're also going to reduce power so there is a price to pay when you oversize stuff you know and to compensate for the oversize to get back up to where you should have been with less it's another thing altogether so it becomes kind of like a real conundrum that way you know so you've got to really um, understand air current flows pressures um, etc you know and how funnel effects work um, so you also got to understand it, it's a pellet gun you know and um, it's only going to be capable of doing so much and then you start reversing your work on yourself um, you know so anyway this tool that I've set up um, like I said, I'm going to modify the other end of this to hold 2240 transfer ports. But for the 1377, what we want to do here is we've got a short side and a long side. We're going to take the long side and we're going to push it into the tool face because we want it sticking out of the lathe chuck. So we'll just go ahead and we'll put this into the drill chuck on the tailstock. And uh, this saves a lot of setup times and uh, makes things very quick and easy. And I can get more precise control over exactly where I want that transfer port to sit. So we just give that a little bit of a tightness to hold it there. Back the tool out. And then we'll just tighten up a little bit more. You don't want to squash the hell out of the transfer port. Okay. So now our transfer port's in there. So let's check the spin on this. And I'll just change the camera angle now so you can see and uh, what we've done. So again, what I've done here is I've moved the tool in, okay, like this. That goes into the lathe chuck face like that, and it allows us to center, and we pull it out, okay, and then it's in. So let's check our spin rate on this. Now on a visual inspection, this looks like it's running true. Now, the transfer port hole size in the 1377 restricted transfer port, let's turn this on, we're looking at about 1.9 millimeter. And we're going to increase that size to 3.57 millimeter. Okay? This is going to allow for extra power with still leaving your Canadian valve in there. You'll still get under 500 feet per second. You'll be pushing about 470s, 480s <coughs> with this modification. Now, I did have to order in new 24, new 2240 transfer ports, so I'll check their actual size uh, when they come in and compare it. Um, but like I said, you can push a 2240 you can you'd even be able to push this one to 3.9 millimeter or 3.95 millimeter it's really uh, touchy to do it and uh, so we'll grab our drill bit here and we'll set her up right about there lock it down now, whenever you're drilling steel, you want to take it slow, but you also want to use cutting fluid so it makes a good clean cut, too. Now, this is being done 350 RPMs. Now, we're going to take this really super slow so we can try, try and get a perfect cut on both sides, like I did this one. There was, like, no cleanup to do afterwards, which is your goal here. You don't want to have to clean up any burrs.
Okay, so we're ready to pop it out. So what I like to do is I'll take the back end of the drill bit, I'll put it into the hole, and then I can get the transfer port out of there a lot easier. And we can clean up the back end of the transfer port here. And we've got a good flawless drill job, both sides, now modified. Now one last little thing you need to know about drill bits, sometimes they undersize the drill, sometimes they oversize. So both of these have been done with the same drill bit, and this, if you feel the wiggle, that's just a little bit bigger, so it's probably closer to about 3.6, you know, same as here. It's pretty close to about 3.6, just a little bit of play. So it does actually over drill a little bit, you know. But if you want to bang, bang on at that particular number, you probably want to order a metric drill bit that's within about half a millimeter um, or 0.5 difference. And that should actually drill it precisely to the size uh, required. So um, anyways, that's our new little tool that's going to save me a lot of setup times. That's our results. And uh, now these transfer ports can be put into even a 2240, um, you know, or right into the 1377 Canadian version. And uh, you'd be able to increase your power a little bit and uh, still stay under that 500 feet per second and uh, not have to... Uh, worry about anything and that little extra bit that you get closer to that five you know helps with energy helps with distance helps with accuracy it all helps 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 right they're all pluses so but with pistols in Canada you know you want to keep them under 500 feet per second and uh, this is still a really good way to do it and you can do it in little small increments too and uh, anyways um, if you have any questions comments hey feel free to leave them and um, we'll see you on the next video for sure. Hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, have a good day.